Very welcome to the um, latest episode of the Attic Sessions and in fact it's now December so it's the last episode of 2016 and what an extraordinary year it has been. Um, so I'm really delighted uh, today to be joined by two very formidable and wonderful women. <laughs> uh, they are the uh, two um, powerhouses behind the story house, Nulig Brennan and Margaret O'Brien. You're very welcome, both of you, to our attic. Thanks for coming along. Okay. Um, so you, tell us about the story house. First of all, you know, wh what is it? It's a residential writing centre um, that is open to everybody who wishes to write. Um, we haven't had something like that here in this country prior to this. We know we've had writing retreats and w workshops and so on attached to festivals, but we've never had a residential centre that anybody could access that offered taught courses. Mm -hmm. uh, so I think that's the unique um, part of the story house that it's residential, mm -hmm. that it's for five days, mm -hmm. and it's taught oh, yeah. by two experienced published writers. Mm -hmm. um, in, in we, the week covers different genres, each week will have a different uh, focus. So, so tell me about how um, the idea struck you. Um, <gasps> And I know, Margaret, you <laughs> thought about it first and then got we, in touch with Nolik, so, so well, we'll, we'll get the well, whole... It was kind of happened. It, yeah, it kind of happened. Um, going back a number of years, I was really looking for something um, to do with... I knew I was looking for a writing course, but I couldn't find... And I couldn't say what I wanted either, but mm. I just couldn't find what I wanted until I happened upon the Arvin Foundation in England. And it really was one of those happenstance things. Um, I went over uh, to Totley Barton in Devon and on to a course that was run by the guy who founded Aravon, John Wood. Now I had no idea of any of this before, <laughs> before I went. Mm. None whatsoever. Uh, I'd never heard of Aravon before. But there's something about it. And I, I mean you say something changes your life. Mm. It absolutely did. Uh, the experience that you would have this space that welcomed anybody who wanted to write. Yeah. Uh, and the respect shown to anybody's, you know, the, the whole approach by John, I mean, he was a remarkable individual. He's since passed away. Um, it was about allowing people to write mm -hmm. and then guiding rather than this, uh, you know, t deliberately teaching. It was, a ma it was an amazing week. Um, so about creating a, a sense of a place where yeah. that enables you. That exactly. enables That's you. Yeah. Um, uh, yeah. That particular course was taught by, by John and P uh, a writer called Peter Please. And I came away, from, I, I said to John there, I said, why has there never been anything like this in Ireland? You know, because it was mm. 40 plus years on the go in England at this mm. point. And uh, he couldn't answer, but he did sign his memoir of the founding of Arvon, you know, he signed it to Margaret, who knows Arvon's real home is in Ireland. Because <laughs> <laughs> I think there are four, what, four houses, four houses yeah. around yeah. The, the UK yeah. Yeah. and I think Ted Hughes was yeah, involved at the yeah. beginning, yeah. wasn't he? He, he gave was. the space. Yeah, it was one and Seamus Heaney. And Seamus Heaney. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, John met uh, Ted Hughes in a pub in Devon. T Ted happened to be in, in Devon at the time yeah. and uh, outlined what he uh, was thinking of doing. And Ted immediately said no, which is interesting. Mm. And in an essay he wrote uh, afterwards about Arvan, uh, he said, I can't understand why I said no. And then he reflected and interrogated himself a little bit uh, because he said, I was, I was aware and I know through Sylvia Plath, you know, the effect of workshops, mm. the American model mm. Mm. at the time, mm -hmm. uh, but he just felt it wouldn't work in England. Mm. The English sensibility wouldn't mm. take mm. to it. But uh, he did come along to the very first uh, workshop, which John and there were two Johns, John Moat and John Fairfax, ran. Uh, they had some youngsters from a school in Devon who were more or less handed over to them and said, if you think you can <laughs> fight yourself, please, you're welcome to try. Uh, the only thing they can spell is trouble, you know. Yes. <laughs> and it was during that week, um, John and John, they, they started to teach 
writing. And this bored voice from the back of the room said, I thought we were here to write. Oh, wow. Yeah. yeah. And John Moot said, that was the moment yeah. when Arvin was born. Yeah. yeah. They put away their, you know, their lesson plans and, and all the rest of it and just allowed them to write. Um, and met o o everybody met as writers yeah. Yeah. Uh, in that space then for the week. And one of them uh, left that week and described how on his way home he suddenly had this a moment where everything mattered because mm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. everything is material for mm, writing because mm, mm. um, so I, yeah. I I know Totty Barton in particular that you yeah. mentioned like one of the first residential workshops first. I attended oh, was it really was oh, there right, yes. in in ninety yes. six yes. and it was uh, Paul Muldoon and Nuala Nugonal yeah. were the two yeah. facilitators yeah. Yeah. and then Maeve McGuckin came in as as the guest on yeah, all midweek Irish but. Yeah. All English, um, all English students, bar me. Yeah, yes. I like that. So I was the only Irish person. On the yeah, yeah. Into as well. um, and it was really just fascinating to see the, how the dynamic developed between yeah. you know facilitators yeah. and and students. There seemed to be quite a high degree of of um, recovery after personal trauma during that oh particular yeah. week. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. there was an awful lot of people kind of suddenly yeah. getting very emotional and running out yeah. of the room. Yeah. And I had huge respect for Paul Muldoon. Mm. born out of that because he was just so considerate yeah, and yeah. careful of people mm, and yes. knew exactly how yes. to handle this and manage mm. this yeah. so mm, that, um, that's key actually what you say there yeah. about about having tutors who know how to handle that scenario. Yeah. it's a very emotional week for people yeah. Yeah. and like that you mm. know walking around the first place we had um, our first course and the woodland and people were just having a little moment a little cry and then in in the actual mm. workshops themselves I actually attended as well as did all the other bits and bobs and mm. um, just see that that outpouring of emotion and people really tapped into yeah. themselves mm. and yeah. they had that time to tap into themselves and they were in this space where it was okay to do that mm. Mm. and it was Susie uh, Maguire and Julian Goff they were our, our, mm. our first two facilitators and they just uh, very experienced Arvin tutors both of them they mm. just knew to, to step back and yeah. let mm. it yeah. mm. unfold. And it's about holding the space yeah. isn't it? Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, so let's just back step a little because Margaret comes back with an idea that it would be great to <laughs> yeah. create this space. With a conviction, Ireland. actually. None of yeah. is telling us yeah. about when it actually happened, but but I want to know how the <laughs> magic <laughs> in between that got from yeah. your idea, having had yeah. uh, the experience in Arvon, to that first moment when people were able to go around a wood and, and mm. sort of let... It let took let years. It took years. How long? Oh, gosh, seven or eight years. Well, I, I suppose... Let Nolly give her part of it now. The second, but I say I was putting forward this idea, yeah, and meeting such resistance. Um, I mean, I had no notion of doing the thing, yeah. But I thought, you know, it should be done. Yeah, yeah. So you know, take yeah. the ball here. Somebody yeah. take the ball and run with it, because um, it just seemed so obvious to me, mm -hmm. and particularly yeah. for my own work as well. You know, because I was working adult literacy and all sorts of things. Um, it was just so obvious to me, um, and then. Um, John Moot, who I kept in correspondence with, he encouraged my, ad, you know, advocacy on this. Um, and he said, you know, Michael D. Higgins was elected. He said, well, now you have a poet president. If you don't get it yeah. done now, you'll never <laughs> yeah. do it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, so I took the uh, occasion of uh, Michael D.'s visit, state visit to the UK to write an open letter and to suggest that he visit Arvan and John Moot, who was still alive at the time. Um, so this is where knowledge comes in. My <laughs> open letter went up on social, I put it up on yeah. Twitter and Facebook. Mm. I got this message from Waterford, from this <laughs> person that I didn't, never knew of. And, and she said he lives like 20 minutes up the road. Well, there you go. <laughs> you know. So I, I remember I was sending, a, mm. sending a, a, a message, you're in Waterford? How come we've never met? So why did this chime so with you? Did. You read that message and why well, did it chime? It was actually, again, Susie, uh, Susie's this great little background person in this, the, the yeah. story of how we, yeah. how we uh, came together. But Susie actually taught on one of Margaret's courses. That yeah, you in Scotland. I in went Scotland. to Scotland as well, and to Arvon and, and Julian mm. as well. And then I knew Julian. Mm. Yeah. And I knew Susie through Julian. And then this open letter went up and Susie said, I think you need to read this and I think you need to meet Margaret. And mm. I always believe everything Susie tells me. <laughs> so <laughs> um, so we, we arranged to meet up in Jeff's pub in Waterford. Yeah. And we sat down over a coffee. And April 2014. Mm. Just, well, it mm. just, we like the cut of each other's jibs. <laughs> <laughs> and 
<laughs> it just it just seemed like he he was someone yeah who understood we yeah. kind of understood each other yeah. and yeah. what Arvin yeah. was yeah. and yeah. what it could do yeah, yeah. and I that I finally met somebody who understood what I was yeah. on about yeah. know, which was it was it was and as Margaret says it's a very clear simple concept yeah it's a no brainer mm. Mm. and to see it you obviously has have more experience watching it unfold but. I could see immediately within the first three days of our first course, I could see oh, mm. this is fantastic. Look Which at these happened people. really quickly then because that yeah. was in the spring of 2015, wasn't yeah. it? And yeah. that was, we met in 2014 and then, yeah, we had it, sorry, in, yeah. in yeah, March, March 2015. 2015. Well, yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. I mean, how, uh, how do you manage to make a dream suddenly reality in so short a space <laughs> of time? It's about taking action. And I, I, I mean, really, only for knowledge, I, I, I would be an ideas person. You know what? <laughs> but ideas, people and action people are not the same. Yeah. You, know, you need both <laughs> to, I think we complement each other Yeah, a lot we definitely bring different strengths yeah. to the project. Um, yeah. But I had worked in advertising years ago. Yeah. Um, and I, I love to write. And I write for very personal reasons and cathartic reasons. And um, I know what it does for me, for my, my well-being. And uh, Margaret is, does lovely courses out in, out in Carrick as well. And I've attended Margaret's workshops. and. I just sort of felt, um, yeah, I, I can, I can maybe give this legs now, mm. and I know certain people, and I have certain skills, I suppose, mm. I've, I've developed over the years, and um, mm. I'm passionate about this. Mm -hmm. And I think, to be honest, I think if you're very passionate about something and you believe in it, mm -hmm. it creates an energy around it, mm -hmm. and it, and that that has carried the project <laughs> forward, and all the little yeah. connections we're making, and little surprise um, introductions, yeah. and yeah. it's. It's just, it's lovely. I it's, love it. It's, it's astonishing, really. Yeah. It, it, I mean, we still, we're operating out of zero budgets and yeah. all of that. But I think there's a wealth of other mm -hmm. <laughs> things that have attached themselves yeah. to it uh, through the contacts that we've made, through people who believe in us. Um, like the residency. The residency, yeah. the mm -hmm. most recent thing. Well, we'll get to that in a minute. Yeah. Yeah. We will get, honestly, yeah. we will <laughs> get to that in a minute. So, so <laughs> the first course. Yes. Yeah. Where was it? In Colligan Woods in West Waterford. And how did you find that? Oh, it was mental. <laughs> <laughs> I tell it, Margaret, I'll tell you. Margaret how did we find it or how did we find it? Well, well both. How did it go for us or how did we find it? Both. Just don't, don't, don't um, open us to litigation in no, any way. Oh, God, no. But would you believe? Um, Margaret went to connect Julian from the train because on the Wednesday pre prior to the, to the start of the thing, I broke my toe. Oh, right. <laughs> and I was going to do driving here, connect this person, and it's going to be a very useful person altogether. And then I broke my toe. And then, as my friend Rory says, uh, Operation um, Broken Toe came into, into being. But um, Margaret pulled into the, the driveway of, 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 the, um, of the compound with, with Julian. And he just took one look and he said, this is mental. Because I was standing in the middle of the avenue on crutches, you know, one foot kind of cocked up. And uh, there was actually a three-legged dog living there. <laughs> and he was kind of running rings around me. And then Susie <laughs> just went by on a bicycle. <laughs> and he said, the whole thing was just, he said, this is perfect. <laughs> you know, <laughs> it's just nuts. But um, oh, there was so much fun, the two of them. Yeah. They really helped the course to... Mm -hmm. To flourish. I mean, uh, they're just they're two extremely funny people. And then she we had Donald Ryan midweek. So it was a fiction yeah. course. It was a short, short fiction. Yeah, short fiction. Short yeah. fiction. Yes, okay. Donald Ryan came midweek. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And sure, he's just amazing. Like, yeah. We just. And he's so sound. Mm -hmm. And yeah. it was, uh, he got into conversation. And on the Wednesday night after the dinner, and the, the boys, uh, Julian and Donald, actually had been in the same school together, but at different stages. Yeah. And then it just turned into this crazy double act. And. <laughs> Um, it was just really, really enjoyable. Yeah. But Donald was so generous with his knowledge and yeah. his experience. Yeah. And he's so down to earth that everyone in the room kind of felt, you know what, I can do this. Mm. Mm. You mm -hmm. know, and mm -hmm. that's that's really important. Yeah, I and think. I think that's the key in, uh, in a, a course like this, that everybody feels that they're welcome at the table. Yeah. Sure, mm. sure. I think that's so important because it's very easy to feel excluded or feel you're so somehow not wearing the right metaphorical clothes, if you mm. like. Um, so again, that sense of, of community being oh. Oh. created in, in a yeah. particular space. Yeah. Yeah. Now, you know, in, in the interest of full disclosure, I know about this course because <laughs> I taught oh. this year uh, in yeah. the second course, which yeah. was the poetry course in, in Boris House. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, that wonderful shape of yeah. um, classes in the morning yeah. and then sort of some downtime yeah. where people had a chance to go off and sort of maybe think about some of the ideas that have been explored mm. and write and mm. walk and mm. um, and then one-on-one -on -one 
time mm. as well between the, the tutors, so myself and Peter Sir, mm. who was mm. my wonderful yeah. fellow facilitator, yeah. um, just worked. And then in the evening, we'd have lovely dinners and everybody shared in the cooking, mm. apart from the tutors. <laughs> and um, <laughs> though, because interestingly, in, in, in Arvon, I think everybody cooked, I think. Did the tutors, tutors, not no the tutors. tutors oh, okay. Haven't you, aren't you doing enough? Yeah, well, indeed. <laughs> oh, God, yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> and, I, and some of us just <laughs> open tins. So, you know, it's probably as well. <laughs> it all helps. Um, yeah. But yeah, that just that, that yeah. space, that sense of this mm. community. So by the end yeah. of the week, everybody felt, mm. you know, tutor and student alike, that mm. they'd been part of this extraordinary experience. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. And the friendships that are born there I mean we, we've we've each course we've had we've had a little meet up afterwards you know once people go back outside into the real world it can sure. be quite a they mm. nearly need to decompress you know <laughs> and you know mm. they, the amount of people that actually came and you know chatted and and they've exchanged um, contact details and they're there as a support for mm. each other you know I mean because mm. they could be talking to other people who weren't on the course but like you weren't there man you know mm -hmm. this is mm. I've got my buddy here and I can talk to them about this and they know a lot more about me now mm. Mm. and that we've shared this experience mm -hmm. mm. and it's lovely because it can be quite a, a lonely sort of vocation you know just sure our urge even yeah. yeah you know nobody else that I know does this or wants to do nobody this. gets me yeah nobody gets me but yeah. I think especially if you're living outside of the main mm. urban centres mm. It can be difficult to access yeah. support. Yeah. Mm. Um, yeah. So I suppose uh, I'm particularly aware of it in Nullig as well. You know that you're living, you know, in a country area. Yeah, because mm. you're in you're in Carrick and, sure and you're yes. in Waterford City. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Mm. yeah. So it can be. I think a lot of the things that I've done, I've done t things that I know I need myself. Yeah. <laughs> you yeah. know, in yeah. terms well of yeah, because uh, you know, yeah, if yeah. you do, that means so it exists. Yeah, yeah, that means it exists yeah. and. Um, well, that makes sense. Yeah, yeah. and yeah. I, I, it's vital. I mean, I, I couldn't think back, you know, to you know, some decades back, and I, I didn't know anybody else who wanted to write. Mm. You know, and we did at the, you know, back in Stone Age. Yeah. <laughs> and you didn't tweet. Yeah. You didn't no. Yeah. 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 Uh, yeah. So all of that, you know, lack and you know, think you're kind of somebody very strange. You must be very strange. Yeah. <laughs> you know? uh, so I think it's important that uh, a community of writers developed sure. and you become part of a community of writers mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and you know that helps in, so you, in so many you ways. you have now another one coming up tell us tell us about that when is it and where is it and uh, it's on uh, the 20th to the 25th of February and it's writing for young people with uh, Elizabeth Rose Murray Sheena Wilkinson and Patricia Ford is our midweek uh, visitor Wonderful. on the Wednesday yeah tour de force there of excellent yeah. women and Sheena has taught on a number of Arvin courses mm. as well. She's very experienced. Mm. And Elizabeth has also been to Arvin. Yeah, yeah. So mm. she, yeah, she, uh, she her understands. Her. Well, she finished her last book there. Yeah. 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 Um, and uh, just it's it's just a, again another another genre we're, we're we're putting out there. But um, mm. yeah, we're excited because they're a lovely team, and already they've been in, in lots of contact with each other, yeah. and they really want the week to go well. And yeah. they've offered to um, they'll take excerpts from people prior to the course mm -hmm. to have a read. Mm. If I mean, it's, it doesn't matter if you don't have anything ready, you can still come along and, you mm. know, mm. hit the ground running. Yeah. Um, yeah, so it's And where is it happening? Oh yeah, it's happening in Lisneva Estate in Carlo, these beautiful um, converted stables oh on the wow. grounds of, of the um, the estate. And we'll have the workshops, and this massive gorgeous room um, adjo adjoining the house for the yeah. workshops. And then there's um, the lovely library then for downtime afterwards. Oh, Big fire and yeah. the run of the kitchen. And they're lovely people there, actually. It's the Bun Bunbury family. So um, As in Turtle Bunbury? Yes. Yeah, his family oh home. Wow. Yeah, he lives off up the field somewhere. Yeah. I didn't come <laughs> across him yet. <laughs> but um, they've been really supportive. And actually, we should also thank the McMurray Cavanaghs in Boris yeah. and also the Beresford family in Dungarvan for hosting us on previous courses. Right. You know, it's down yeah. to them giving us a, a, a rate we can sure. afford and no it's, and cer it's us certainly and added to the atmosphere in, in Boris house that we we realized that we were in the seat of the last high king of Ireland I think it was yeah who uh, wouldn't be inspired no absolutely yeah. and the sheep in the I center know, of the, the courtyard yes. yeah the silence of the lambs was, was <laughs> there's there's always <laughs> something there's always something that yeah. becomes the sort of the theme in, in yeah. a week like this it just yeah, it's yeah. Yeah, I think it was crows in, in West Rochford. A lot of crows. <laughs> yeah, a lot of crows. <laughs> Lambs Do you see the big dogs in Boris, though? So I'd, I'd get up in the morning around half seven, I'd go down, I'd just take a little stroll around, and 
they had these big, massive black dogs. Mm. And it was like we had Did beautiful anyone else weather. See them? No, like, are you sure? <laughs> I have a picture of myself and Jack Hart and one of those dogs. It yeah, happened. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but um, it was really, like the mornings were really atmospheric and it was really foggy. And then this big yolk would like, come at you out yeah, of the mm, mist. Yeah. And you'd be at one terrified and absolutely, this is massive, this is brilliant. And it just, mm, the whole place was just awash with... But I think that is, you know, something really yeah. um, fundamental in that kind of residential writing experience because mm. you do respond to the place mm, and, yes. you know, it is the uniqueness. I mean, one of the things that I remember about Top D. Barton and I gather it doesn't apply anymore. There were a lot of tomcats there oh. when I stayed in 96. So the smell of kind of spray, oh. tomcat spray, <laughs> okay. was just throughout the house. I and, and get that experience. Yeah, well, you know, so, so I think... It is what one of the things that just makes it different to going in once a week to a place yes. or whatever. You just yes. you, you're engaging with the environment yeah. in a you in are. a very different yeah. way, and as I well as exactly the people yeah. that are with you. As well as the people are with you, but I also think when you're uh, immersed like that for a week away from everything, you enter a different kind of time dimension as well. Yeah, mm. so much yeah. happens between the Monday evening and the Friday night, Saturday morning. Yeah. It's as if if you, you really have entered a different kind of time zone. Get the yeah. bubble. Yeah, but and even better if there's no Wi-Fi actually, because then you don't yeah. get the distractions. Yeah. Wi-Fi, the problematic Wi-Fi is a good thing. Yeah, it is. <laughs> no, no yeah. uh, for a week like that. Yeah. Um, definitely, definitely. Yeah, yeah. and it, I think uh, for a lot of people, it's so difficult for any of us uh, to find that downtime yeah. in that space yeah. because we're being pulled in all sorts of directions yeah. and we have all sorts of responsibilities, and we probably take on even more responsibilities. But to have that permission once you're in yep. on yep. this course. That's it. Mm -hmm. That's you're there mm -hmm. to write mm -hmm. and yeah. explore what writing does and what you can do with writing. So, language. so people, how can people find out more about this particular course coming up in February? Uh, we have a website, uh, the storyhasireland.org, and we have a Twitter feed at TSH Ireland. Okay, we'll put all these we details have a Facebook. down on our our attic session page. Um, and. They can email us. Yes. Yeah. I'm not sure when this is going out. This is hopefully going out. Today, because oh, you're man, watching us. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, <laughs> so so um, today is the fourth uh, of, of December. Uh, so to, okay, right. Yep. Yeah, okay. Well, I won't tell you about that then. So, <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, it's it's um, you can be, we're we're kind of we're everywhere really yeah. <laughs> that yeah. we can afford to be at the and, moment. And and I think Waterford uh, local authority is yeah the deadline for that's the thirtieth of November. Okay, so people will have missed that, but there yeah. might be other uh, yeah. possibilities yeah, but through oh local absolutely. authorities. Mm. Um, and we do encourage people to approach the local yeah. arts office. Uh, there may be some funding available uh, yeah, towards exactly. the course. It's one of the frustrations that we have that we can't offer bursaries ourselves. Yeah. Mm. Yes. Yeah. Uh, but we would hope at some point uh, to be in a position to mm. be able to offer story house bursaries. Um, so what's what's the typical kind of uh, fee for? It's seven hundred euro, oh. which covers everything. Everything for the week. Everything yes. for the week. Well, That's pretty good. Accommodation, your workshops, your, well, your food, your food, all your food. All yeah. You really shouldn't have to spend a penny once you get inside well, the there door. Is no spend. And there's nowhere <laughs> to spend <laughs> it. Is it so? You're you're not even in a town in Lisbon, Navi. It's there's it's kind of well, a little, little bit it's off, off the beaten track. Yeah, okay. Okay. and that's important. Um, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, um, if you want wine for dinner, we can certainly get some for you. <laughs> it'll cost you. But yeah. Uh, yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah. yeah, it's good. And even that, even have to, even taking away the whole, to having to feed yourself, not to figure out dinner and, and all that sort of thing mm -hmm. is, is great. It's another thing you don't have to worry about mm. except mm. one night mm -hmm. during yeah. the week. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. it's just about you and your writing for the yeah. for the time yes. that you're there. Yes, and and good. I think uh, you probably uh, have experienced this as well as on both sides. Um, you know, you have the workshops in the mornings and you have the one-to-one -one tuition or the one-to-one -one meeting, tutorial meeting. Mm -hmm. But so much happens, I think, in form outside of that as mm. well. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. You know, at dinner, yeah. chatting over coffee. The walks. Yeah. Walks. Yeah, totally. And, you know, this development happens, it's almost 24-7 <laughs> when you're there, 24-5. Mm. Um, so it's not simply that, you know, you have the workshops and, you know, that's all the, that's all the teaching you've done. You know. mm -hmm. It's not. It's, it's about being available. You know, people are available to each other. And the tutors work really hard, mm, yeah. mm, put mm -hmm. in a lot of time and care, give care and attention mm. to everybody. Um, so yeah, I think that all adds to the, you know the benefits and what people come away with sure. at the end of the week. And you mentioned a little earlier that the idea of another expansion that you can um, yeah, talk yeah. about the residency. Yeah, Do you something amazing. Tell us a bit. It's amazing on a lot of levels. It is. Yeah. Uh, mm. One of 
part of the amazingness of it is that it comes from the generosity of one of our past participants uh, who when she'd experienced, on, I was driving her to the bus away f to get her bus and mm. uh, she said I, I, I'm doing up a cottage in the west of Ireland and I'd love if we could have mm. Story House you know, maybe offer a burst, of, can we work on that? Mm. Can we work on of that? Course. I nearly crashed the car. <laughs> um, and so that has come to pass. Uh, so mm. we're offering the first bursary, which would be a week in May, during okay. the month of May. Fantastic. And anybody who's taken a Story House course, oh, including the one next February, yeah, yeah. Yeah. is eligible to apply for a place. The deadline is the 10th of March, oh, 2017, fantastic. to apply. Mm. And it will be as assessed externally. It's a very simple process mm -hmm. just to show how you this might benefit yeah. your writing. Mm, mm -hmm. And it's not confined to a particular date in May. The, the successful uh, person can choose their own week in May. Super. Mm. So they've the, the and where, uh, where in the West of Ireland is it? Uh, we We're going to limit that information. Okay. Yeah, um, yeah, because it's, it's you'll have to, to wait to and find out. Yeah, yeah, because they want to hold out to their privacy. It is a yeah. family Fair home. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh, that they're making it. Oh, very good. It. But it's very nice, and you can see some pictures of We've it on our there. website. It's, 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 <laughs> yeah, it's the real it's deal. So it's gorgeous. gorgeous. Yeah. Some, you can mm. only tell if there's somebody very beaming smiles going around some country road in a yeah. week in May. You can <laughs> probably guess <laughs> that they are <laughs> staying somewhere <laughs> yeah. uh, close by. Yeah, yeah. Um, so that's a really generous thing to come out with. Oh, absolutely. You know, good yeah. thing. Really good thing. And that that feels feels us as well. That kind of feedback and acknowledgement gives us the energy to to keep going. Yeah, you know, that we're doing something. That we're doing worth something. Doing. Yeah. So, could you ever envisage a situation where there was a house, oh, yeah. one house that yeah. became yeah. the story? Christmas house. is coming, isn't it? It is. <laughs> there has to be a generous donor out there with a large yeah, rambling house in the middle of the field. Yeah, yeah. But it would be great on mm. so many levels, um, mm. certainly, uh, and yeah, it, 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 and then people can really could really identify mm -hmm. with the place mm, and yeah. that it's but I mean it's, it's working out that we should we call them pop-ups at the moment they're working out quite quite well yeah and we'll yeah. just continue on in that vein until yeah. um, our philanthropist uh, turns up lands yeah, on the lawn over the horizon their <laughs> helicopter <laughs> does a course um, does yes, a course yeah, yeah absolutely exactly. the, best yeah. Thing, the best way to, to absolutely story yeah. are you listening yeah. Dennis yes um, <laughs> <laughs> well, listen, thank you so much oh, for, you. for coming mm. and telling us about that. Um, you know, I, I had a wonderful experience as a tutor, so uh, I wish you absolute you. the best of luck. Mm. I don't think you need luck because I think you've got all the qualities uh, to make it work. And good luck with the next course. Thank you for having us. Thanks, Thanks so much. Thank, thank you very sure. much. <laughs> Thanks, Peter. <laughs> so that's um, the last episode of uh, the Attic Sessions for 2016. Um, I want to thank again Nulig Brennan and Margaret O'Brien for joining us to talk about the Story House. I want to thank all of our wonderful guests um, who I'd love to list, but then I'd probably forget somebody and, and, and hate myself afterwards. But everybody who was on a show uh, since March of this year, thank you very much. We uh, are really looking forward to coming back in January with a new lineup of guests, including Katie Donovan, who's going to be our guest in, in early January. So thanks for your company over the last nine months or so. Have a very happy Christmas um, and talk to you next year. It's not a lot, but it's enough this I'm just a dreamer, I'm a dream Cause it's the closest I'll ever get to you